charting the pullback here, let's just take a look at what's been happening here. So again, complacency, we're well below that on the VIX. Uh, the volatility index, certainly something to watch uh, whenever, you're, whenever you're trading, obviously. But uh, when we're down here below the, uh, the red, that you know, usually indicates that you're in pretty smooth sailing, uh, or, but often complacent, right? Uh, so like we were right before the, uh, you know, but right before COVID hit in March of 2020, where we just went to the moon here on volatility up to 85 or so, you know. And anytime you get up to 30, I mean, that's pretty extreme. That's usually, when you do get up here to 30, you know, this can often be a really good time to go long on your favorite stocks or your favorite, you know, ETFs because you're inevitably going to turn around and come back down. You don't just stay up there forever. Even here, you know, we were up there for a few months and then just came right back down. Um, and so where we are now is kind of where we were back here. Uh, we're a little elevated, maybe where we were in 2021. But even then, you can see where we were. So again, we could certainly uh, get back up into this this red zone and maybe even come back up in the month of September. If you go back and you look, this might be a helpful thing. We can just go back just for the last few Septembers and see what happened to volatility. Here's September. And so you can see September to October there. Well, we got a rally uh, in, in the VIX on that September. Let's go from this September here to this October. And you see, we did get a little bit of a rally in September, right? And then it came back down in October, right? Kind of came back down in October. Just kind of building on Steve's comment there. Uh, here's uh, September to October. Let's look and see. Yeah, kind of got shot up and then came back down in October, right? So you can see uh, September here, September to October. There's your rally in, uh, you know, in volatility. And then it comes back down in October, right? So, you know, every single September on this chart has seen a rally in volatility. So here we, here we are heading right into the next September. Could we get a sell-off? Of course. You know, that's certainly, uh, certainly likely. Um, but, but again, it doesn't have to happen. That's the other thing we have to keep in mind. Just because it's likely doesn't mean that it's going to happen. Uh, and we don't want to, we don't want to short circuit our whole investment strategy, you know, for something that may happen. Uh, okay. Now, uh, take a look here, uh, at the S and P 500, uh, right here at its 50. This is exactly where you would expect it to pull back to. Uh, and it's been fairly gentle. Look at the volume, not wild volume. It's actually been falling out along with the price that's actually not that's not terribly bearish uh, so a pullback to the 50 completely normal here if we break down below the 50 as i've said watch 4275 on the s p that will be a kind of a line in the sand that would be a very sharp fall from where we are now um, you know compared to where we've been uh, so we're watching that area but we may get a rebound here from the 50 or maybe just get some general weakness that's probably even more probable uh, as we kind of linger through the next uh, few weeks. Uh, the NASDAQ also, NASDAQ 100 pulling back to that 50. It's really kind of clinging to it right now. That 50 is beginning to flatten a little bit, um, which it's been rising pretty much for, you know, all the way since the beginning of the year as it began to take off there. So a flattening of this, you know, wouldn't be the end of the world. It wouldn't be the end of the trend. But, um, you know, but we are watching how it reacts. And of course, for the NASDAQ 100, we're watching this 380 to 350 zone. This is really where you want to see the NASDAQ not fail at 350. Um, okay, and then here is the NASDAQ uh, with a suggested stop loss of 360.88. So if you're trading the NASDAQ, QQQ has been one of our top ETF leaders. Uh, that's, that's our suggested stop loss there on QQQ. And it's really not too far above it right now. So that could be taken out uh, soon. And we had talked about uh, an idea on sh uh, shorting the, S and, uh, shorting the uh, uh, NASDAQ 100 as a hedge, kind of as a hedging idea with a 988 stop loss, $9.88. This is PSQ. Remember, this is an inverse ETF. So when the NASDAQ 100 falls by 1%, well, PSQ is designed to go up. So if you so if you if you want to get one on one exposure to the Nasdaq 100 and you want to ride the Nasdaq 100, we'll use QQQ. That's one of our favorite ETFs. Of course, we own it for the long term. But if you want to trade uh, and you want to profit if the Nasdaq goes down, well then there's PSQ. So PSQ is like the inverse uh, of QQQ, and it goes up by one percent when the Nasdaq 100 falls by one percent. 
So last week we had talked about, hey, look, this one's kind of, you know, pretty close to its uh, recent support that recent low, we should say, back in uh, middle of July. That's about 988. Uh, And so now it's back on the rise here and it's above the 50. We were watching this 50. Okay, so so the idea here is that one way to hedge through September would be something like PSQ. You could also use SH. You know, there's a few different ones that you can use. Um, it, it, but what's nice is that they're so close to their lows that, you know, if it does come back down and the markets hit a new high, well, you haven't really risked too terribly much. So that's why I like this idea is that it's a fairly tight stop loss if you're wrong or, or if we're wrong. So uh, that's one idea. Uh, and that that is rising. You know, it, it's been rising since last week um, and it's riding along the 14 day and it's above the 50 day. So that's an interesting idea. Also, the dollar, again, not too terribly concerned about the dollar here, certainly a rebounding uh, bond yields, of course, up the dollar up. Uh, and we but we still have this, you know, kind of lower lows uh, and h- lower highs where you clearly have this bearish channel. And then you have this uh, finding resistance right at the falling 200 uh, daily moving average, 200 daily. Uh, And so, you know, again, getting above that and staying above that is going to be Hercule. It's going to be difficult, very, very difficult. So we suspect that we're probably, this is probably the final moments here, the final gasp of the dollar's current rally. Um, We don't suspect it to get back above the 200 for any lengthy period of time. And if we do see the dollar rise, let's just go ahead and you know preempt this and say this now, that if we do see the dollar rise here and it comes past this low and it comes past, or this high and it comes past this high, that this is the line in the sand. This is why we kind of have this confluence of these two lines here where they come right here, right at 107, 108. You know, if the dollar rallies, I mean, this is, to us, it's the terminal uh, peak for this particular uh, cycle. We can't imagine it getting above this again, barring some sort of black swan event, barring something that we can't see now. Um, so again, very likely that we're going to see some relief here from the dollar after it's had this nice rally. We're probably going to see yields and everything pull back. But again, that that could it could accelerate. These things could get a little worse as we head into September. Okay, so that's why that's why we don't really know. I mean, we, we're just kind of we're kind of watching and observing and following you know, the price and the volume. But uh, overall, to us, this area up here would be the extreme area that it could possibly hit, the major resistance zone. We don't expect to see that. But again, barring something unseen that we just don't know about right now, something that just comes out of the blue that no, no one can predict. But, um, you know, through September, uh, if we do have that bigger pullback, well, you could see a little bit more exuberance here in the dollar. You could see a little bit more exuberance in rates, uh, in yields. But... Um, but we suspect that'll be short-lived. 